The Independent National Electoral Commission has warned political parties to field eligible candidates and vows not to postpone poll. And All Progressives Congress replies to Governor Wike of River State says it was PDP that killed Nigerian Governors Forum and not APC. Welcome back, and this is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has hinted that all political parties to work towards avoiding unnecessary litigations capable of disrupting the electoral process. The electoral umpire also warned that it is not ready to alter its timetable for the upcoming Edo and Undo governorship elections. Joining us to throw more lights on these is Festus Okoye, the National Commissioner of INEC in charge of information and voter education. That's Mr. Festus Okoye, and also will be joining us anytime soon is a legal practitioner, Hamid Jimo. You're welcome, Mr. Festus. Thank you so much. Yeah, good to have you again. Thank you. Let's start with um, what the chairman of INEC did say about the issue of getting these parties ready. What probably led to that uh, reminder? Because the timetable is out, so why will INEC have to remind these political parties again? Well, it's important to remind, remind the political parties uh, of their responsibilities within the electoral framework. Now, the commission released this timetable on the sixth day of February uh, 2020. And uh, from the 6th of February to today is quite a while. Uh, so it was important to remind them uh, of their responsibilities and their obligation to comply uh, with the timetable and schedule of activities issued uh, by, by the commission. Uh, because as the chairman pointed out, we are not going to amend, we are not going to adjust the timetable. So all the uh, timelines provided in the timetable must be complied, uh, all the political parties must comply with the timelines uh, provided in the uh, timetable and schedule of activities. So I think that it was in order that the chairman reminded them of those timelines and, and, and the need for them to comply. You know, trust me, a lot of politicians would have preferred that uh, it's none of your business. If they don't like, if they are going to you know, take advantage of any party that doesn't take this serious. But let's look at uh, some of those key issues that he mentioned. And uh, some will want to believe that, is it that INEC is a, doesn't want to spend more money because you know what this costs you when we have to do a rerun? Is it really based on the need for INEC not to spend unnecessary funds again? Uh, not, not necessarily. Uh, well, uh, you know, the money is involved are the Nigerian people's money. And um, as a commission, uh, we hold these monies in trust for the Nigerian people, and we have a responsibility to spend whatever monies are appropriated uh, wisely and rationally, and also in accordance uh, with, the, with the law. Uh, so I think that we have a responsibility to husband properly the monies belonging to the Nigerian people. Uh, but beyond that, it is also very, very important to make sure that when people go to the polls to vote, uh, they don't go to waste their time. They don't go, and at the end of the day, their votes will be declared as wasted votes. So we felt that it was important for all the political parties uh, to put their house in order, get their house together, and then prepare uh, for the conduct of uh, both the Edo and Ondo governorship elections. So I think that that reminder was in that particular direction. Now, part of the thing the INEC chairman made reference to was the experience in Bayelsa and Kogi. What exactly was he referring to? Probably for the benefit of those who were not really following the trend, or what really led to that landmark judgment? Well, well what, what the, 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 there are two things that the chairman uh, refer, referenced. One, political parties have a duty, constitutional and legal duty, uh, to screen their candidates well, in terms of making sure that their candidates meet all the mandatory constitutional requirements for contesting election, and also to make sure that they comply with the provisions of the Electoral Act to avoid any untoward issue and any untoward consequence 
that may lead to litigation. And at the end of the day, the votes of one of the candidates or political parties may de be declared as wasted votes. So the chairman referenced that. The second issue the chairman referenced was the whole issue about um, uh, 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 political parties and candidates and uh, aspirants and persons unleashing violence on both permanent and ad hoc staff of the commission. And the chairman is saying, this time around, if you unleash violence on the electoral management body uh, and its staff, if you disrupt the electoral process, we are not going to announce the results of that election. That's a very critical point you've just raised, and I'm sure I will come back to that. But let me uh, bring uh, Hamid into this conversation, who is a lawyer. Uh, now, Hamid, looking at Section 177 of the 1999 Constitution, it, it says, a candidate nominated by a political party must be a Nigerian citizen by birth, must have attained the age of 35 years, must be a member of and sponsored by a political party, and must be educated up to at least school certificate level or equivalent. I'm sure this is a very popular part of the Constitution that has caused a lot of controversy. Now, a lot of people want to make reference to this, that is it not safe for our politicians to just put in their secondary school certificate? And what is the implication of this if we have our leaders with just uh, O level? Yeah, in, my, in my humble view, any person can uh, contest for election or is qualified to contest for election if he's educated up to at least school certificate level or is equivalent. This is a constitutional provision. And we all understand that the provisions of the constitution is supreme. So if the constitution has provided that such a person must be educated up to at least school certificate level. The word school certificate level does not really mean that such a person necessarily must even tender a certificate to that effect. There should be evidence that at least he has studied up to at least school certificate. It is the minimum educational requirement that the constitution laid down. So somebody who is uh, aspiring or an aspirant for any elective office uh, at the governorship level might have OND, HND, BSc, LLM, PhD, or might even be a professor. But what the constitution requires is a minimum. It is the minimum that is stated, which we all understand that what the constitution is saying is that Somebody cannot say he has a primary school certificate and then, or is educated up to primary school level, then he would like to contest for election. So we all understand that at this level, the list created by the constitution is up to a secondary school level. So if such a person has up to senior secondary school level, then he's qualified. So that is what the constitution provides. Except the legislators are ready to amend the provision of the constitution. Okay. As far uh, as the constitution is concerned, I mean, an ordinary education up to secondary school level qualifies such a person to contest. And, and, and I we understand that as a constitutional provision, but let me quickly get your comment on it before I go back to Mr. Zoko, Mr. Okoye. Uh, uh, what is your opinion? Because sometimes a lot of people just throw uh, jibes at INEC for they accuse them of not doing due diligence, and that's why we have the court most time determining who becomes our governor, making reference to what happened in Bayelsa. So, where do you think that uh, INEC is at fault in not checking the qualifications of this candidate that are fielded? How did they pass through the eyes of INEC? Yeah, what 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 I I can view in this scenario is that INEC having cited the case of Bayelsa and Kogi State is learning and is ready to make corrections in some of these uh, scenarios that have, uh, that have happened. Perhaps that is the reason why INEC is standing on its toes to remind all these political parties of their duties 
and roles as far as the primaries are concerned in this incoming election, upcoming election. And INEC has also reminded these political parties of the provisions of Section 177 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, so that by its supervisory role upon the primaries of the, uh, of the political parties, all political parties will be in compliance. I think this time, INEC is going to do its best to ensure that whatever error or errors that must have been committed in the just concluded state go uh, governorship elections will not repeat itself or themselves. So I think it's a good way forward for INEC to have come up by uh, holding political parties to, the, to their duties as laid down by the Constitution, the Electoral Act, and its own guidelines. So if the INEC has led them, perhaps they could have conducted these uh, primaries according to their, uh, to their own wills. And this okay. could lead to violation and leading to unending litigation in courts, Beautiful. as we had experienced. In the past. So because okay. by electoral act, a court will not stop the processes of a primary election. So that is why it is very, very important. A candidate or a political party who has not featured this candidate and submitted the same to, the, to INEC, it stands to be disqualified if it fails to meet up with the, with the deadline set by INEC. Thank you very so I much. I think it's very, very Amit. important for INEC to remind them of these duties. Very, very important. And uh, that, that takes me back to Mr. Okoye. Mr. Okoye, this might be two two-pronged question. The fact that you mentioned that um, if there is violence, these elections will be cancelled. And we realize that over time, politicians try to leverage on these, especially when they know they are losing. They try to disrupt the process. Could there be an attempt, or probably is in the offing, where we will seek a reform in our electoral act, where this does not just go scot-free, where I know we just cancel the election because of the violence of one party or the other. And probably if you want to also react to the last question I asked Amit. Well, well uh, um, let, let me begin with the last question. There are two sides to the whole thing. One, the provisions of Section um, 177 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, relates to the issue of qualification to contest election. Now, the country does not, there is no provision of the Constitution that makes for independent candidature. And so to that particular extent, if somebody walks to the commission and presents himself or herself as a candidate in the election and without being a member of a political party and without being sponsored by that political party, we will not accept such uh, nomination. Secondly, the constitution says that if you want to be the governor of a state, you must be a Nigerian citizen by birth. So, so to that particular extent, if a Filipino or somebody from Chad or somebody from Niger um, uh, 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 fills a form, a nomination form, saying, look, I'm from Niger, I'm from Cameroon, there is no way the commission will accept such nomination because it offends the clear provisions of the Constitution. But on the issue of um, the minimum qualification, look, if somebody has gone to school and if somebody's pass are very clean, there is nothing preventing the person from saying, look, I have school certificate, I went to the university, I got my LLB, I went to the law school, I got my BL, I, I got a second degree, I got a third degree, and so on and so forth. It is when your pass are not clean that you, you are parading multiple certificates, and then when it comes to putting in your certificates to show your qualification, you are taking your primary school certificate to show because there are problems and challenges with your other certificates. In other clients, in other jurisdictions, the mere fact that there's some suspicion or a certain level of suspicion relating to your qualifications poses a moral challenge. And people have dropped off from presidential race, from governorship races, and so on and so forth, on the basis of the moral question, not even talking of uh, uh, that the first certificates and so on and so forth. The moment there's some level of suspicion, it raises a doubt on your moral credibility. And so that, for me, uh, is the issue. So in relation to the provisions of Section 177, 
the commission will enforce the provisions of section 177 to the letter. We are not going to give an inch. Now, in relation to your second question, the challenge is, is that there are people who still do not believe in constitutional democracy. There are people who believe that they must design ways and means of disengaging the Nigerian people from the electoral process to make sure that the votes of the people do not in the main count. And that is why some people, rather than go, going to go and campaign, we rather want to uh, 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 corrupt electoral officials, unleash violence on electoral officials, and also create uh, a situation of mayhem, a situation of fear and anxiety on the minds of the people. So what the chairman is saying, when we get to this, we are not going to take it. So if you want to contest elections, you must present yourself and conduct yourself in a manner that accords with both regional and international standards for conducting and contesting elections. Uh, so we, Section uh, 26 of the Electoral Act is very clear. When there is likelihood of breakdown of law and order, or even a threat of breakdown of law, of law and order, and there are cogent and verifiable reasons, we can postpone an election. But the challenge here, and I think that the political parties know, Section 178, subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria makes it clear, makes it mandatory, that the Independent National Electoral Commission shall not conduct any governorship elections earlier than 150 days and not later than 30 days uh, uh, to the end of tenure of the incumbent. The implication is that the commission must conduct the no governorship elections on or before the 13th day of October 2020. If we conduct the elections on the 14th day of October 2020, it means that we have not conducted any election and Nigeria will slip into a constitutional crisis. So I think that the politicians should be aware of this and be aware of the fact that it is not right and it will not be proper for them through their acts uh, of omission of commission to throw the country into a constitutional crisis. And that is why it is important for the chairman of the commission to keep on sounding a note of warning uh, to the political parties that if they try to disrupt this process, um, so many people will lose out in the process, and they may not be the, 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 the beneficiaries of any okay. disruptive process. Okay, let's quickly look at, uh, uh, let me talk to Amid. I mean, let me quote the, the national, I mean, the chairman of INEC. Look, look at what he said. He said, all political parties interested in fielding candidates for the election are reminded that they must conclude their primaries for the nomination of candidates in the next 10 days. You and I can easily guess why this warning is coming. As much as I may not want to mention parties, we know what is going on in uh, Edo State. And we can s predict that there will be issues of litigation still going on. So shouldn't there be a kind of provision for this kind of uh, litigation that we are having? Because the party may end up running into trouble. For instance, uh, in response to your question, looking at the provision of section 87, subsection 10 of the Electoral Act 2010, it provides that nothing in this section shall empower the courts to stop the holding of primaries or general election or the processes thereof under this act pending the determination of a suit. It means that if any political party drags itself into an unending litigation, then such a political party has made itself to be disqualified because the, the such a political party will not be able to meet up with the deadline set by INEC. Though it is left to INEC to decide to extend this deadline. But within this limited time, the, most, the political parties must conclude its primaries and submit name or list of candidates who has qualified to, for, to aspire under its political party for, a, for the governorship uh, uh, office. So if such a political party ends up engaging in litigation, then is, is such a political party is at its own peril. So this is just a very big note, note of warning for every political party to consider settlement, amicable settlement of whatever that could happen.
Okay. This is an internal, this is an internal political party affair. So it is easier for every for every political party to resolve whatever grudge or quarrels or issues that it has in relation to a, an aspirant or a candidate for that political party that will be submitted to INEC. So this is not this is not a, a, a an inter political party affair. This is intra. It's within political party. Okay. So they should be able to settle issues among them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me quickly get uh, Mr. Okoye's perspective on this. Another issue that a lot of, especially the voters, are concerned about is <laughs> we have pandemic on our hands. And INEC has promised that necessary steps will be taken. How conscious and what are the provisions you've made so that people can still be safe while exercising their franchise? Well, uh, you know, the, the, this pandemic is, um, they, they, they say, say it's, not, it's novel, it's, it's new, it's quite unusual. And um, very few people and very few jurisdictions have experience on dealing with a pandemic, especially when it concerns uh, the issue of elections. And that was why we wrote out a policy on conducting elections under this uh, uh, particular uh, situation. And we have also wrote out uh, what we call voters' code of conduct and also supplementary guidelines uh, and regulations for the conduct of these uh, elections. What is important is that all the uh, staff we are going to engage in terms of ad hoc staff and so on, we are going to provide personal protective equipment uh, for all of them in terms of uh, hand sanitizers, in terms of uh, uh, face masks or face covering, and also in terms of making sure uh, that um, we get all our uh, pulling units fit for purpose. Uh, and also in terms of the voters, we have also made it very clear uh, that we are going to have a two-tier uh, system at the pooling units, an inner, inner cordon and an outer cordon. And we are going to rely on the security agencies uh, to uh, assist in making sure uh, that people comply with the social distancing and physical distancing uh, guidelines and protocols. Uh, so, and that every voter that comes to the pooling unit must wear a face covering. Um, uh, you see, I, I'm not talking of face mask. Every voter that comes to the pooling unit must have a face covering. So it does not matter whether it's an improvised face covering or, or, or the normal uh, uh, medical face, face mask that people use. Let, you must have a face covering. Uh, so we are also making sure that um, uh, uh, we comply with all the protocols and all the regulations uh, by the Presidential Tax Force and by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. And, and um, uh, we had a meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security yesterday, and we have formally admitted a member of the of the presidential task force on COVID-19 uh, into the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, at least to advise us on some of the protocols going forward. But in the main, fundamentally, it is the commission that will conduct these elections. And we believe uh, that we can conduct a successful elections uh, through uh, sensitization and through uh, stakeholder cooperation, because the conduct of election, as I normally say, is a multi-stakeholder venture. No single agency or single commission or single individual or, or party can go it alone. Uh, so we rely on the cooperation, understanding and uh, 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 of all the key stakeholders in the electoral process uh, to package and deliver this election. Thank you very much. Uh... Mr. Festus Okoye, the National Commissioner of INEC in charge of voter education and information. Thank you for your time. Let me quickly get the last comment from Amid. Amid, maybe in the next 30 seconds, do you think politicians have learned their lessons looking at what has happened to both parties, especially the major parties in the past? Well, as for me, it is, it is left to those to, to all political parties to take a great lesson from all that has happened. Not just for only a political party. All political parties should be able to review all these cases and make a better decision out of it. So it is left to individual political party to decide whether it learns or not. Any political party that refuses to learn or neglects to learn will definitely find itself in the same scenario. But in order not to, to to be found in such scenario, it is very important as my advice with due respect that each political party should pick sense and a great lesson from all that has happened in the past. 
Thank you so much, Amid. Uh, I almost call you Amid Ali. <laughs> thank you, Amid Jimo, for your time. Thank you for your intervention. And thank, thank you, you for the much. interpretation, which is your primary job on this issue. And we sincerely hope that we'll have a rancor free and non litigious uh, electoral process among these parties. Thank you once again. We hope to thank get in touch with you thank some you other time. Me. Yeah, you're still watching Plus Politics. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, here's some weekend on Monday through some jibes at the current leadership of Nigerian Governors Forum. That is up for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.